Pod. Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Gilmore, and over there we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. And if you're looking for something like this, you can go to the Nashville Locker Room. If you're looking for um, specific Admirals merchandise, you can go to milwaukeeadmirals.com. Or if you're looking for Everblades gear, go to floridaeverblades.com or the echl.com page and click on the Florida Everblades team page if you don't want to figure all that out but anyway while we're here game three first game in nashville posted early yep. this morning i mean really early this morning get loud nashville it's game day well you guys definitely did that that i give credit for you definitely did that i've seen yep. some of my friends already posting that they have no voice left <laughs> But stats, this will be interesting. Shots on goal were 56 to 54. Face-offs were even at 50 apiece, 50%, 50%. I feel like I'm watching an episode of Dukes of Heaven. I'm going to give you 50% of 50%. Anyway, mm. power play uh, was one for three for Carolina, one for seven for Nashville, seven. Uh, 14 penalty minutes for Carolina, six for Nashville. Hits were 33 to 32. Blocks, uh, uh, the hits were in favor of Nashville. Blocks were in favor of Carolina at 21 to 20. Um, giveaways, well, let's not even go there. Uh, the giveaways were 26 to 9, Nashville. But takeaways at 15 to 4 for Nashville. Nashville at 15 takeaways? Yeah. They took the puck away more than Carolina gave it away. Yeah. Yeah, that works. All right. <laughs> Scoring in the first was Ryan Ellis with an assist from, well, what do you know? Who do you know? Tanner, do you know? Well, that's his first playoff point. Congrats, Kim. Yeah. Um, And Colton Sissons, former Milwaukee Admirals captain. Then scoring at the 1544 mark of the first was Sebastian Ajo, his third unassisted. Then we get to 1935, so there was like 25 seconds left. And Phil Forsberg scores his second of the playoffs with an assist from Ekholm and Saros. Saros' first playoff point. Um, then scoring in the second, we had Jordan Stahl with an assist from Warren Fogel. Stahl's third goal, uh, Fogel's first assist. Then we had uh, Vincent Trocek on the power play with an assist from Svechnikov, his second, and Ajo, his first. Then, well, Nashville did something uncharacteristic. They answered with a power play goal of their own. Yep. Took a five on three to happen, but it, it worked. Um... Mikel Granlin scored his first of the playoffs with an assist from Hala and Yossi. I swear that seems like something from Minnesota outside of Yossi. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, then scoring in the third, you got Ryan Johansson on a nice deflection from uh, a point shot by Ryan Ellis, his second assist of the year. And Phil Forsberg, or second assist of the playoffs, Phil Forsberg's first. Then Brett Pesci scored his first. With an assist from Timo Teravainen and Sebastian Ajo. Teravainen's first assist, Ajo second. First overtime, nothing. Second overtime, two minutes, well. Okay, there was some, still some good time left. At the 14.54 mark of the second overtime, Matt Duchesne scores his first of the playoffs with an assist from Roman Yossi and Alexander Carrier with his both with their second assist. Yep. Believe is this or not, I don't care if you do, but if I remember correctly, and I am correct, Alexander Carrier to this point still is the only. Predators player 
with a plus, unless Cousins was a plus, he was not. He was even. Goaltenders. Uh, goaltending for Carolina was Alex Nadalkovich. He stopped 49 of 54 with a .907 save percentage with 94 minutes and 54 seconds of time on ice. Um, then we have uh, UC Saros. UC Saros stopped 52 of 56. That it ties the playoff record for the Nashville Predators. Um, the person he tied was Dan Ellis. Um, that was done during Pekka's first year with the Nashville Predators. Um, right. On, on the upside of that. Um, with that being said, your three stars of the game, third star of the game, Yushi Saro, second star of the game, Phil Forsberg, first star with the game-winning goal, Matt Duchesne. It's the Flying Dutchman. Now, um, shots per period were 11 to 9 Nashville in the first, 16 to 13 Carolina in the second, 10 apiece even in the uh, third. Um, first overtime, uh, Carolina outshot them 13 to 10, and second overtime, Nashville outshot them 10 to 8. Your referees were John McIsaac, Francis Sharon, and Tom Chimelinski. Linesmen were Andrew Smith and Brian Poncic. Head coach for Carolina is Ron Brendamore. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Scratches for Carolina were Cedric Paquette, Max McCormick, Drew Shore, Joachim Ryan, Anton Budo, Joey Keenan, James Reimer, Jake Gardner. Uh, Roland McNeil, Ryan Suzuki, Morgan Geeky, and Jacob Slavin. Nashville, Tyler Ellington, Brad Richardson, Rem Pitlick, David Ferentz, Rocco Grimaldi, Ty Matthew Olivier, Philip Tomasino, Victor Arvidsson, Jeremy Davies, Erica Bradson, Michael McCarran, Dante Fabro, Casimir Cascasuo. Her we do. After every show, take a look into post-game interviews. I find it interesting that the Preds post-game interview, there wasn't one. By the way, I want to add something. Matt Duchesne has become the eighth player in Preds history to score an overtime goal a playoff overtime goal, joining Craig Smith, Kevin Fiala twice, uh, James Neal, Victor Arvidsson, Mike Fisher, Matt Halischuk, and Jared Smithson. Good God, I haven't heard Jared Smithson's name in a really long time. All righty. Also adding in other news. Oops. Really oops. Go away. Really go away. I hate tech issues. All righty. So John Hines did not have a post-game conference because they are currently going to bed. <laughs> Apparently, Nashville mm -hmm. said they're tired. We're going to sleep. You know, we're going to rest because, you know, right. we need to get ready tomorrow for practice to be ready for Sunday's game. Yeah. Apparently, Rod Brendamore is taking a different approach because Rod Brendamore said, We played great. We worked. We played hard. We, we, play, we were playing a great team. And to me, we were also fighting the refs. That's plain and simple. You can't tell me two games in a row, they get seven or eight penalties and we get three. When the game is even, it's not right. right. To me, that sounds like a coach whining about 
basically getting caught. If you get caught committing penalties, it happened. Just ask St. Louis. Here's the thing. All the penalties we saw today, I didn't see. Okay, you're mad that your guy got caught tripping, and then uh, you delay you uh, you sent the puck over the boards. They called you for a delay a game. Then Jordan Stahl tripped somebody. Is that what you're compl- if that's what you're complaining about that you got caught tripping someone on the penalty kill? Whose fault is that? It's not. Yeah. It's not the ref's fault. He's supposed to be looking for that. Right. It's your player's fault for not playing the game. Yeah. And when you sit there and have these moments, look, Nashville did not have a great game. Neither team played well until the OTs. Right. I mean, you had uh, shut down OTs. I mean, these guys were hitting hard. Um, So when you have those, it's, it's just different. You cannot have these moments where you're whining and complaining about the referees. Ask Nashville how that goes when you complain about referees. Because uh, we got one fired this year. <laughs> so let's just say that, you know, that was that was kind of not a good thing when you're when you're attacking referees, you're taking away from you you say you played hard, you worked hard, you did this, you did that, but then you just you say, well, we were also playing the referee. So now you're making an right. excuse when you lost an even strength. Yeah. You cannot do that. We don't make excuses when we lose. We just take them and go, well, it's this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy's fault. Right. And the coach. Because at the end of the day, everything rolls back to the coach and GM. No matter how good or how bad your team is, everything rolls back to the coach and GM because they are the ones that are going to be going into the office if they win a Stanley Cup, going, I want a pay raise. (laughs) You know, just that's how it worked. You know, ask ask any coach any in any sport. But uh, yeah, it is eleven thirty at night. We had double overtime. <laughs> Our crew, we had the Florida Everblades. We are exhausted. We will see you yeah. guys tomorrow. Hopefully that we, you know, get some sleep. <laughs> mm-hmm. So talk to y'all later. Peace. <laughs>